So before starting anything about ACI, what I'm going to do is to explain VXLAN. Why do I use VXLAN and how am I going to work with them? Now, first of all, let's take a look at the topology that I have here. This topology, of course, is a very simple topology in a real network, in a real data center. This is going to be uh, much bigger and uh, very huge, of course. But you can see that I have used leaf and spine topology. In leaf and spine topology, which is called fat topology or closed topology, there are different names for this. Uh, scalability is very, very uh, simple and easy. Uh, you can have only two layers. That is going to be the spine layer and leaf layers. If you want to increase the bandwidth, you just increase the number of spines up here. If you want to have more ports and more connections to other networks, you need to increase the number of leaves here. So this is very scalable, very, very scalable. But VXLAN, of course, is going to be added to this to uh, give it even more scalability. Now, VXLAN, of course, is topology independent. It is not something that you can just only enable on this type of topology. But what I'm going to do is to have VXLAN in here. Why? Uh, there are several reasons for that. First of all, I want to make sure that this uh, this part that is inside orange, of course, you can see that this is going to be called my fabric. So I want to make sure that my fabric is kind of loop free. Now, there are multiple solutions for that, but one of the solutions which I'm going to use is to make sure that my fabric is totally layer three. So when I have a layer three fabric, uh, and I have uh, some communication from my tenants, which is going to be layer two. Now, sending this is going to be a problem. VXLAN is going to solve this problem. Uh, VXLAN will say, OK, let's keep this as underlay protocol. And what we are going to have is going to be an overlay protocol on top of this, which is going to be VXLAN. Now, VXLAN is going to have this frame from the you know, tenant, this frame is a layer two frame. This is going to be encapsulated into VXLAN header. So I'm going to have a VXLAN header on top of this. And of course, I'm going to send this using UDP and then I'm going to add another MAC header to this. But uh, this, this is very important for me. Now, when you have this, you can easily think of a lot of te technologies that are very similar to this. Some of them, for example, you can have dot one Q, or you can even have Q in Q, which is going to add two tags here. This is kind of a tag which we add to uh, the frame that we receive from uh, our tenant. When we receive this and we tag it, we just make sure that on the other side only uh, the reader of this tag or the tenant which is supposed to receive this tag is going to receive this frame and it is going to forward it to its own network. So you can think of dot one q you can think of MPLS, VPN of course, you can think of uh, Q and Q, you can think of a lot of technologies like GRE tunnel or something like that which adds such thing to the frame and sends it to the other side. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do here is to add a series of features to this to create my fabric. As soon as I finished creating the fabric, what I have is going to be a giant switch up here. Uh, the tenants are down here. They don't have any clue of what is happening inside this fabric. What they understand is there are some ports which we are connected to that, and we just send our packets to there, and we just receive our packets from those ports. That is all they need to know. Now we are going to speak about this a little more and um, you know explain everything in detail but let's go back to the slides and see what features we need to have just to enable VXLAN. So first of all you should know that to have VXLAN we need to have full IP connectivity inside between our VTEPs. What are the VTEPs? VTEPs are going to be my spines and leaves. Actually, my leaves, not the spines, uh, because uh, leaves are going to create some tunnels between them. And like I said, I'm going to speak about this in detail in some of the videos if you just uh, refer to the basics of ACI. Um, in, in there, I have, uh, I'm have i going to speak about VTEPs in detail. But let's say that VTEPs are here are going to be all my Nexus switches. So IP connectivity is important between them because they need to 
uh, be able to route to each other. Then I'm going to have multicast here. One reason to have multicast is going to be sending bump traffic. So basically, let's go back to here and uh, explain this. If I just go back to my topology, I would say that, for example, this server needs to communicate to this server. So server one needs to communicate to server three. Server one sends an ARP message, and this ARP message is going to get to this VTAP. And I, like I said, this is going to be called VTAP Virtual Tunnel Endpoint, which is going to be one of these leaves. So this VTAP, let's call this source VTAP or VTAP A or L1 or whatever that is, is going to, you know, send this packet to server 3. Now L1 doesn't know where server 3 is. And let's say that we have many uh, leaves here. So all of them are connected to different hosts here. So what L1 does is, is finding a way to send this packet to almost all the VTAPs. And those VTAPs are going to know whether this server is connected to them or not. Now there are several tables, of course, we have here, MAC address table, something like a MAC address table, let's say, is going to be L1 or all the other Ls, let's say L3, L4, and L5 are here. So what I'm going to have is sending a packet somehow to all of these. Now this is a layer 3 network. So what I need to do is to send this packet using multicast because broadcast is just between the links. This is not going to get to every other leaf. And uh, unicast, we don't really know the destination leaf. So what we need to do is to send this message using a multicast to the other side. So we just wrap this inside the multicast address and the multicast address is going to be registered with one of the VXLAN um, IDs which is called VXLAN Network ID or VXLAN Network Identifier. And this VXLAN Network Identifier is going to have a multicast address and this is going to also be tied to a number of VLANs. So what I receive here, I'm going to send it to the multicast address which is registered with this VXLAN identifier. And then all the other leaves are going to receive this message. So this is going to get to L2, to L3, 4, and 5. Now one of them is connected to the server. In my case, for example, L2 is connected to the server. So it is going to send the ARP message to the server and also, because it has received the message from L1, now it knows L1. It will know the L1's IP address. It will know what devices are connected to L1. And uh, the next thing is, Server3 is going to reply back to L2 with the ARP reply. And L2 now knows uh, where L1 is, and instead of setting, sending a multicast back to L1, it just sends a unicast back to L1. And L1 is going to receive that, and L1 is going to know about L2 as well. And then the message reply is going to back, go back to server 1. So, one of the reasons that we use multicast is when we have kind of a traffic which is broadcast, or unicast, unknown unicast as a matter of fact, and multicast messages that uh, these devices are going to send to their counterparts on the other side. And my network is going to consider this as bomb traffic and this is going to just wrap it into a multicast and send it to the other side, which means all the other leaves. So uh, that is why we need this uh multicast enabled here and we are going to use bidirectional multicast which is going to be more um, scalable in our case there are some features that we need to enable almost on all devices one of them is going to be nv overlay this and then vn segment vlan based these are necessary to enable vxlan and if we have fabric pad we need to disable fabric pad because fabric pad and VXLAN are mutually exclusive. So you cannot really use FabricPan, PAT, when you have VXLAN. 
uh, about the features you need to enable this one first I don't know why because uh, the order of operation should not matter in this case but most of the time if you do not enable this one the second one is not going to be enabled and uh, you need to somehow first uh, go with NV overlay so in the next video I'm going to start doing this configuration and show you how you can enable uh, VXMAP flood and learn in your network